Hello everyone, here we are. We're gonna get going with Ecclesiastes 4. Again, I looked and saw, remember this is Solomon speaking, all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors and they have no comforter. And I declared that the dead who'd already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But better than both is the one who has never been born, who has not seen the evil that's done under the sun. And I saw that all toil and all achievements spring from one person's envy of another this too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Fools fold their hands and ruin themselves. Better one handful, excuse me, better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. You know, sometimes we use that scripture regarding marriage. The husband, the wife, and Jesus. If both of them are serving the Lord and love the Lord more than they love each other, then there's hope. Three cords are not easily broken. Ecclesiastes 5. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who don't know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Don't be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you're on earth, so let your words be few. A dream comes when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. When you make a vow to God, don't delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It's better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin and don't protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, don't be surprised at such things, for one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether they eat little or much. But as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. I believe that. I believe with, with riches comes great stress. 
You have to be thinking about it and protecting it all the time. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners or wealth lost through some misfortune so that when they have children, there's nothing left for them to inherit. Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry in their hands. That's where we get, you can't take it with you. This too is a grievous evil. As everyone comes, so they depart. And what do they gain since they toil for the wind? All their days they eat in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. This is what I've observed to be good, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given them. For this is their lot. In other words, enjoy it, it's short. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, this is a gift of God. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness of heart. You know, I have a lot of stuff here in my house that I really truly enjoy. And I have recognized that that is a gift of God, that I am here enjoying the things that I have. You know, um, Ecclesiastes 6. I have seen another evil under the sun, and it weighs heavily on mankind. God gives some people wealth, possessions, and honor so that they lack nothing their hearts desire, but God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them. See? Pardon me while I jerk around with my hair. Because, you know, we're all vain. <laughs> um, and strangers enjoy them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. You know, there's a scripture, and I have it on the wall. It says, um, but godliness with contentment is great gain. And I believe it's from Timothy. I could be wrong. But, you know, being content with what you have, being happy with it, being able to enjoy it, that really is a gift. A lot of people have, and they don't enjoy. A man may have a hundred children and live many years, yet no matter how long he lives, if he can't enjoy his prosperity and doesn't receive proper burial, I say a stillborn child is better off than he. It comes without meaning. It departs in darkness, and in darkness its name is shrouded. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man. Even if he lives a thousand years twice over, but fails to enjoy his prosperity, do not all go to the same place. So learn to enjoy it while you're here. Everyone's toil is for their mouth. Yet their appetite is never satisfied. What advantage have the wise over fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Whatever exists has already been named. Here we go again. And what humanity is has been known. No one can contend with someone who is stronger. The more the words, the less the meaning. And how does that profit anyone? For who knows what is good for a person in life during the few and meaningless days they pass through like a shadow? Who can tell them what will happen under the sun after they are gone? So life is short. Learn how to enjoy what you've prospered in and made for yourself. Enjoy your work. And eschew injustice when you see it. I love you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Pray for me, I'll pray for you, and we'll pick it up with Ecclesiastes 7. God bless you. Bye-bye.